to me. I was a prisoner. Your love broke me free. I was blind in unbelief, and you made me see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God is real. I am a miracle. My heart has been healed. Come and witness for yourself. He is revealed. Hallelujah. Living, breathing, hallelujah. 
your hands together give the Lord a good praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Can I get just a little bit more in the monitors up here, please? Welcome to Dove Christian Center Church. What Dove Churches would know we welcome you to another service and media outreach, an in-person service and, and on internet. We thank God for you, and we bless God for you. We thank those that give into this house to continue this ministry, and, and, and we love you for doing that, and we thank you for partnering with us to get the word out that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. And so we bless you today and ask God's riches upon you. And in this house, his riches upon you. Thanks to all the people that make this, this broadcast and this, this media outreach possible. God does all things well. And we thank him and we appreciate him. And today, as usual, with your Bibles in hand, let's make our confession just before we minister the word. Everybody, let's say it together. This is my Bible. I am who it says. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the matchless name of Jesus, we thank you for this time in your word. We thank you for ministry in the house. And so we come against anything that's on assignment to stop the word from getting out. And we declare that the Holy Spirit will aid and assist us in, in searching your mind and releasing it into the world today. And so we thank you for everything that's freely given to us of the Holy Spirit. 
We thank you for the victory that we have through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, Lord, let the word of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be acceptable in my sight, sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Today we're going to talk from the subject, Defeating Discouragement. Defeating Discouragement. Defeating Discouragement. Everybody say that with me. Defeating, Defeating. discouragement. discouragement. Let's open up with this statement. Discouragement is a deadly tool of the enemy. In discouragement, is the plan to derail the plans God has for your victory. In discouragement is a derail plan. Now, I don't want you to turn off. I want you to turn your ears on. Because sometimes we can get over-churched and we turn a deaf ear to something that has really come to help us. Discouragement can be subtle or so subtle that it is, it is accepted into our everyday lives as normal. Before somebody comes along and shakes it and you realize that it is abnormal. Because many days you can live with stuff as normal and it is abnormal and accepted because it has become accepted in degrees. It can take the form of depression and oppression, discouragement. Well, let's move to the, the scripture in our lesson. And this is the basic lesson text. And out of it, we're going to jump out with different information pieces. If you will, turn to 1 Samuel 30, verses 1 through 6. 1 Samuel. Or in some schools of thoughts, Samuel 30, 1 through 6. And here begins that reading. Now it happened when David and his men came to Zigzag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag, attacked Ziklag, and burned it with fire, and had taken captive the women and those who were there, from small to great. So they took the children too. They did not kill anyone, amen, but carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city and there it was burned with fire. And their wives, their sons, their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until 
they had no more power to weep. They cried until they couldn't cry anymore. Somebody knows what that's like to get to the end of tears. And David's two wives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelite, and Abigail, the widow of Naboth, the Carmelite, had been taken captive. Now David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved every man for his sons and his daughter. But David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. Well, the King James Version says of that last sentence, but David encouraged himself in the Lord. In other words, David found strength in going to the Lord with his discouragement. It's, that's good for you today. You'll find strength when you go to the Lord for your discouragement. It, it won't happen on Facebook. You can get my ministry on Facebook, but 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 if you ever put any any situation in Facebook, you get all kind of responses back that make you wish you hadn't even brought it up. So you can't use Facebook as a as a sounding board when you're discouraged. That's that's what that's that's the time you need to take it to the Lord. Are you out there? This, the scripture, however, gives us the reason for David's discouragement. But if we would, we would look closer at the passage of scripture that I just read, those first six verses, we find a subtle enemy mentioned. It is in the sixth verse where it says, Now David was greatly distressed. The word distress is not what I'm looking for. For the people spoke of stoning him. Stoning him was not what I'm looking for. Because the soul of all the people were grieved, every man for his sons and his daughter. But David in strength, but it said, uh, because the soul of all the people was grieved. I ran forward, but I wanted to stop there. That's what I'm looking for. That's the subtle enemy. It's called grief. How do you get to the end of crying? You're in heavy grief. And along with grief comes many different types of things. Grief Grief here is, 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 is not only speaking of, of death, but it's not death because I, I emphasize that, that nobody died. But they were still in grief over loss. Oh, my God. Grief can come in when something is subtracted from you that you don't want to go. And sometimes discouragement takes the greater form of, of, of grief. Ooh. What is grief? Grief is an oppressive spirit sent from the evil one. It's an oppressive spirit sent from the evil one. to stop the people of God from rising up and operating in victory. So when you just sung about rise up, rise up, it led right into what I'm talking about here. I need my monitors again. Grief 
ushers in a spirit of discouragement. And it does it two ways. Discouragement ushers in grief. Grief is related to any number of, uh, number of events or situations. Grief can come in by any of the following areas. This is just a short list. A series of disappointments. You're disappointed, so you're disencouraged, so you're in grief. The death of a dream. A shattered relationship. Your heart being battered and bruised from repeated attacks from the enemy. Despair over long-term problems that don't seem to be moving is discouragement. Devastating and damaging Life events is discouraging and grief comes in. The enemy attacks with the spirit of grief in order to take the fight out of us. So grief comes to, to disable you. Grief can come in through divorce. I'm ready to get rid of her. I'm ready to get rid of him. But what you don't know, anything that you've been in covenant with, it's harder to break from. Because it's not only entangled, it's enmeshed and it's interwoven and stuff. And it's like picking the fibers are part of a rug based on colors. It takes a while to pull it apart. Again, from our scripture in 1 Samuel 30, verse 6, we find that when the spirit of grief had taken over the men with David, the first thing they did is, 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 is start to stone David. Oh, God. After all, it was while the men were away with David that the, that the town of Zigzag was plundered, burned, and their wives and children were taken away. So what happens in grief? Misguided grief begins to blame others for all that happens to you. When it's misguided, you have to look for somebody and say, it's their fault. I didn't do it because it was their fault. Woo. Misaligned, misguided grief. Mis misplaced grief makes one a perpetual victim. It is always everyone else's fault. Never mind. It's their fault. I didn't get the job. They did something to me. I didn't pass the test because the teacher didn't like me. Maybe he would have liked you if you had studied to pass. Oh, I'm sorry. I, that, that was supposed to be the bubble above my head. Misplaced grief seeks to infect everyone around them with the same oppressive spirit. Have you hung out with somebody that was all downtrodden and in grief and and, 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 and just, just 
challenged and discouraged. And before you know it, your mood came down too. Because it is infectious. You need joy-filled friends that know how to overcome in joy, that know how to encourage themselves. You don't need anybody negative around you. The Bible says evil communications corrupt good manners. And then I have a principle that I like, and it's that, that whatever you entertain will detain you. You think you aren't being detained by what you entertain, but the fact that you're entertaining, it means it detains you. And one of my fine elders of this church said, water always seeks its own level. Meaning that even if it's bad water, there's a level for it. Woo. Just so I won't leave you at that place. Here is the defense plan for dealing with grief. There's a defense plan. Number one, grief is a spirit. Bind the spirit of grief. Number one, bind the spirit of grief. It's, it, this is this is what the word said. If you want to know how to operate, the word, our manual for living, shows you what to do to bind grief. Matthew 18 and 18. And I'm going to do it from the amplified version. I'm sorry I didn't give that to you, King. Amplified version. It says, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, Whatever, everybody say whatever, whatever. you bind, and, and in, in notes, the Amplified Version says, forbid, declare to be improper and unlawful. What you bind is forbidden and is improper and unlawful. What you need to bind is forbidden, improper, and unlawful. It's a violator. So it needs to be bound. Grief has to be bound. So joy can come. See, joy is a spirit too. And he'll give you the spirit of joy. For the spirit of heaviness. It's a trade-off. You can't operate in both of them at the same time. Everybody holler, bind it. And that's what it is. If you're in a sullen mood all the time, you need to bind the spirit of grief. Because it'll attach itself to discouragement in every area of your life. Before you know, you're discouraged all over the place. And you don't know. And it manifests through blood pressure. It manifests through heart problems. It manifests through depressive anxiety. And you're getting a pill for what you ought to buy. Because ah. when the pills wear off, you still... Some people drink alcohol to get them through. I, I feel better. Just let me get a little nip or something. But then Alcohol is a depressive. And that's why most drunks are sad. Now, I'm not talking about anybody that's wrestling with the addictive thing. In, in, I'm talking about its actual function. It's depressive. I don't know where I saw it years ago on TV where most of the drunks, they portrayed them this way. They sing this one song, How Dry I Am. You don't get happy 
Savior. You might for a minute. Or it's the family function. It's all right at Thanksgiving. The turkey and the macaroni and cheese, everything disappears. But when the booze come out, that's when the party begins. And everybody starts telling you what they really think about you. And the turkey you just cooked. You know it. Are you out there? Bind the spirit of grief. It said there. Let me finish reading. On earth shall have been bound in heaven. So what you loose, what you bind here, God said, I'll spiritually match it in heaven. Come on, that's good news. Heaven backs up your activity of binding. Because you have the power to bind what hinders you. You have the power to stop calling me to bind up what only you can bind with your own mouth. You tie it. You shut it down. Oh, my God. And then the scripture says, and whatever you loose, hey, God, loose means Permit. Declare lawful. Whatever you loose will be loosed on earth and then loosed in heaven. Oh, God. God has created you with binding and loosing power. So you don't have to hang with it anytime. I don't care how you feel it, you can get out of the field. You can change that feeling. You can change it. You bind it up and because it is unlawful and it is improper. And so you lose something that's lawful and proper into your life. It's time for you to get the proper into your life. Number two, ask God to reach in and heal you. of the oppression and the hurt. Some of you walking in discouragement because you never got over the hurt. And you've got to get over the hurt. And I'm talking about the insidious, infectious side of the hurt. If you're still hurting, that means the wound is still pussy and full of bacteria. But I fell and bust my knee as a kid. It bled, it hurt, it started healing. The pus showed up to help the scab form. And now I can still see a mark where I was hurt and where I fell is still on my body, but it doesn't hurt anymore. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You've got to get rid of the pus and the bacteria of the hurt. People that intend to hold on to the hurt make this statement. I'll forgive you, but I'll never forget. Woo. You only want to remember because you want it to get pussy again. And it does. Whoa. Number three. This is the defense plan. This, this is the defense plan. Number three. Ask God to restore the joy of your salvation. But first, if you're not saved, you got to get saved. Then he can restore something that you had. Restore the joy of your salvation. Psalm 147 and 3. Then here comes a promise. 
He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wound. He declare illegal and improper anything that's attached to the wound. Do you see? Here comes the action plan. That was a defense plan for dealing with grief. Here comes the action plan. It's called encouraging yourself in the Lord. Now remember, before David encouraged himself in the Lord, he was in grief and he wept until he had no more tears. Woo. And all of us go through that process where we cry and we cry and we cry and then at some point in our heart, in our spirit, we have to search our memory and then we start realizing that God is back there. Here is the action plan, number one. Remember what the Lord has done. Ooh, ooh, ooh. My God, my God, thank you. Remember what he has done. How many of you has the Lord done something for you? And I mean seriously, has done, that, that, I, I'm talking to everybody in the house. The fact that you're sitting upright, he's done something for you. He has done something for you. And see, when, when David thought to this, encourage himself, David had to go back in his memory to the day when he was in front of a, a, a giant by the name of Goliath. <laughs> and all he had was a slingshot and a stone. But before David defeated Goliath, the giant, David, the shepherd boy, was back in the shepherd, the, the sheep field and the sheep fold with the sheep. And when a bear came after his, his sheep, he used that same slingshot and a smooth rock on the bed. Then he did it with a lion. Oh, God, God. So David and God had history. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And sometimes you don't need to abandon your history because you have a history with God. Anybody got a history with God? You don't have to go five years back. You can just go a year back and the Lord has brought you and the Lord has kept you. And it wasn't by power and it wasn't by might, but it was by his spirit that he kept you. It wasn't your degree on the wall. It wasn't your magna cum laude status. It was none of that. It was the keeping power of the Lord. Because if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, tell me where would you have been? I had some friends graduated at the top of their class in my graduating class. And when I started college, I found that friend walking up Cass Avenue talking to themselves. So you can't even trust your mind because you can lose it. Are you out there? Remember what the Lord has done. Here, here's some additional ones I want to throw in just for extra measure. Psalm 27 and 1. Psalm 27 and 1. My God, my God, my God. My God. It says there. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I don't know why we operate in such fear. 
if we dare claim the Lord is my life and my Savior. That's what salvation is. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I need to read verse 2 because I'm in it too deep to come up out. When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, the Bible says they stumbled and fell. Well, since I've gone that far, I got to read verse number three. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. In this I will be encouraged. Well, number four. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord some of the days of my life. Once a month. Once a year. When I feel religious. <laughs> All the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord. And to inquire. In his temple. I guess I'll stop. And then if that wasn't enough, Romans 8, 31. My God, my God. The Bible says, how shall they hear without a preacher? A preacher. How should they hear without a preacher? Romans 8 and 1. When you have it, say amen. 831, I'm sorry. 831. What then shall we say to those things? If God is for us, you say the next word. Who can be against you? You can't have a double declaration. You can't have a negative and a positive. If God is for you, how many is he for in this room? Put the hand up. Then who can be against you? <laughs> it just got to make sense to you at some point. Either you are or you aren't. Either you're in or you're out. Either you believe or you don't believe. Either you trust or you don't trust. Either you think he can do it or you don't think he can. Decide which one you want. Because you will have one or the other. Two, pray. David prayed. And I'm running, I'm running on, I'm out of time. Psalm 34 and 4. It says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from some of my fear. All of my fear. I sought the Lord. When you get in trouble, find the Lord. It's your job to seek him. It's your trouble but only he can get you out of it. And that's when you get to him that he asks for your trouble. Where, preacher? He said, lay all your cares on me because I care. He asks for your trouble. Because he can handle it. Okay, trouble, give it to me. Let me have your trouble. Come on. Tell me about it. When did it happen? What did they say? What did they do? That's God talking. I want to know what happened in your trouble. Did you, you, they did what? Say it again. They did what? I want to know what happened in your trouble. 
okay, I know how to handle that. Number three, realize God is in control. And in this out of control world, we have a lot of people that think that they are in control. And they are out of control. And the worst thing is to think you're in control and start losing it. <laughs> and start slipping away from you. I, I, everything, everything's going wrong because you thought you were in control. But you're not. You can't control what's not yours. Psalm 31 and 15. I have time to tell you to flip to it. It's going to come over here. Psalm 31 and 15. It says there about realizing who's in control. My times are in your hand. Come on. Everybody say that with me. My time are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Because my times are in your hand, so I need your hands to deliver my hand. Three, ask God what you should do. Number four, thank you. Ask God what you should do. Sometimes we won't ask him because we're afraid that he's going to give us an answer that we don't want to receive. And that's how we operate. Newsflash, that's exactly what's going to happen. Because he knows the thing that will get the better result, it's not about your satisfaction in the fact that you ask for help. Sometime when I go to the doctor and he says, well, this is going on with you, I said, well, should I do such and such? He said, no, I want you to do this. And most of the time when he said, no, I want you to do this, it's not what I want to do. Anybody had that experience lately? No, don't, don't be ashamed. Hold it up high. Hold them up real high. All you guilty folk that went in self-diagnosing. Telling the doctor what you need. You, you, need, you need something else to happen to you. Just give me, give, just give me a little something in it and I, I'll be all right. Just do this. I don't want to do that. Because you are trying to delay the inevitable. How many of you know that God doesn't delay the inevitable? He gives you just what you need when you need it. And you know what? And then you get happy at the result. God brought me through and he had to drag you through. He had to drag you right through. Ooh, I'm sorry. Lift up your heads over your gate. <laughs> Oh, lift up. It's, it's all right. How many of you know God has drug you sometime? I'm a patient too. And sometimes I've tried to fool my doctor too. How was this? Oh, it was, it was okay. What was it? I don't exactly remember, but I, it's okay. I mean, you tried to fool. Because you, you, I don't want him to say nothing else. You better trust God. Holler over at somebody and say, trust God. Now, now, now turn back to him and say, come clean. <laughs> Ask God what you should do. And I'm almost done. After our first six verses of 1 Samuel 30, we find David asking God what to do. That's after he was in grief, 
after he was about to get stoned, after he cried until he had no more tears, then he decided to encourage himself in the Lord. So while he was there, he decided to ask God, what should I do? And verse 8 gives us David's response. And this is what I want you to, to go in on today. So David inquired of the Lord. Say that with me. So David. Now I want you to say that line again, but I want you to put your name there. So. Say it again. Saying, shall I pursue this truth? that just wiped out camp and took all of our family, shall I overtake them? And everybody read the next three words. And he answered, if you ask God, he will answer. Can you wait on him enough to ask him until you get an answer? Not the answer that you want, but the answer that you need. If he answered David all those thousands of years ago, in 2021, he will answer you. And he answered him. But he didn't answer him until he asked him. Come on, come on, come on. Open your mouth and ask God, shall I pursue? Shall I overtake? And he answered him and he said, pursue. God said, pursue. Go after. For you shall surely overtake them. And without, what are you going to do? You're going to do what? You'll recover all. It's time for you to pursue, overtake, and recover all. Come on, put your hands together. Time to pursue and overtake. That's after you strengthen yourself in the Lord. David strengthened himself in the Lord. He said, what should I do? Tell me. I did, I've cried so much. Both of my wives are gone. All these men's children are gone. What should I do next? He said, he said, he said God, God, you got to tell me. Because unless you tell me, I won't know what to do. And that's the way you got to approach it. Unless you tell me what to do next, God, I won't know what to do. Pursue. Go on and get them. Overtake and recover. See, when the Lord tells you to pursue, he's going to be with you in the pursuit. When he tells you to overtake, he's going to help you overtake. And when he tells you to recover all, he's going to help you gather everything back. He's going to pull it all back to himself. Get your wives back. Get your children back. Get your good back. You're going to recover it all. Give God a good praise in this house. That's with the help of the Lord. Blessings to you today. Father, we thank you. And we honor you. And we give you all the praise. And we give you the glory. And we praise you for your goodness and your mercy. And we love you for keeping us. We love you for being with us. We love you for being our all in all. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Defeating discouragement. You're the only one that can help us do it. And we
we trust you for it. heard us today, and you received the word of the Lord today, blessings to you. If you're in this room, or if you're in the viewing audience, you can make this confession today to invite Jesus into your heart, to be restored back to the kingdom of God today. Just say these words after me, Father, in Jesus' name, I repent of my sin. And I give you my life. Today, Jesus, be my Lord, be my Savior. Today, I believe in a miracle. I believe that one day you were born of a virgin. And on one Friday evening, you died on the cross. Three days later, you were raised from the dead. To the glory of God. And on that confession, and with this faith, I am saved. And so we thank you, God, and we bless you today. Thank you for coming into our heart. So all over the room, let's rejoice for them right now. Hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that, son. Now, please, somebody heard a word. Somebody got a word. You need to be restored back to the kingdom of God. It's available to you. If you haven't been in church in a while, we're right here on military and the ratio at the larger border streets of Livernois and Michigan Avenue. Come see us. This is a great house, a warm house, an inviting house, a present house of the Lord. Come be a part. We love you today. God bless you until we get a chance to meet and share together again. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. To all of our viewers, we thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving, which will take you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.